Now I am on my computer and let's start learning about Git Bash. We already installed Git in the earlier video, right? Now in this video, we are going to learn about the Git Bash command line interface. Now to open Git Bash, I'm just going to first create a folder on my desktop. So here on my desktop, I'll just right click and then new and then click on this folder. And let's call this folder my underscore project. I'll just open this folder and this folder is here. Now I'm going to right click in this folder and we can have this show more options. If I click on it, you will see we have this option of open git bash here. Click on this option. And once you click on this option, you will see this black colored window appear. Now, this is the git bash command line interface. As you can see here, this is the name of the computer and this is my username. All right. And then here, notice that this is the address of where we have opened our command line interface. So we have opened it inside desktop and inside desktop, there is a folder called my project and we have opened git bash in this my project folder. All right. Now let's start with some basic commands. Now, in order to use your computer, one of the most basic operations is that you want to create a folder. How do you create a folder? You just uh, simply right click and then new and then click on this folder and then you can just name this folder anything and a folder is created, right? But uh, this is the graphical user inter interface way of creating a folder. This is not what we want. I'm going to delete it. And now I'm going to create the same folder using the command line interface. So here in our git bash, what I'll do is I will write a very simple command, which is mkdir. This means mkdir means make directory. All right, now this command will create a new directory or a folder. So you will write mkdir and then a space and then the name you want. Let's say I will uh, call this day one. So I want to create a folder that's name is day one. If I hit on enter, you will see on the right side in the folder, we have day one folder created. Pretty easy, right? Now, similarly, if I want to create multiple folders, let's say here, I'm going to write mkdir, which means to create a directory or a folder. And then I can specify the name of the folder. So a space and then day two. Let's say I want to create multiple folders. Let's say day three, space, day four, space, day five. And if I hit enter, you will see on the right side, we have all of these folders created at once. Now, if you had used the graphical user interface to do the same task, it would have taken you so many clicks. First, you had to click on this new folder and then rename it to day two. And then similarly for day three, day four and day five. This is the power of command line interface. Now, after this mkdir command, let's take a look at another use case in our day-to-day -day life. Let's say I want to create a simple text file. How would I do that? I would just come here, right click and then new and then I would just select this text document and then I will just name it, let's say my underscore a document and hit enter. Now this is my text document. But again, we are using GUI here. We want to do this task with the help of the command line interface. So I'm just going to delete it. And here in the command line interface, we will use a simple command that will create a text file for us. Now how to create a file, I'm going to write here, touch. And after touch, I will have a space. And after the space, I will just write the name of the file I want. Let's say I want to create a file that is named as my underscore document. And the format of this file is .txt, which means that it is a text file. If I hit enter, you will see on the right side, we have a my document text file. 
pretty easy now similarly what we did with the uh, make directory uh, command where we specified multiple names separated by spaces which led to the creation of different folders all at once we can do the same with the touch command so let's say i want to create uh, two more documents i will just uh, simply write touch and then name of the file let's say a uh, file uh, one dot txt and then space and then a file two dot txt if i hit enter you will see on the right side we have two files created in one go using the touch command in command line interface now let's move on to another use case let's say we have this terminal here and we have all of the folders and files here now you are not going to always keep your terminal on the left side and your uh, folder on the right side you you won't be always doing that as a developer you would be only using your terminal most of the times so let's say you do not know what is inside your project now you want to list all the files and folders inside your my project folder there is a command for it also and that is ls now if i hit enter you will see it gives us all the list of the folders and documents that are present in our my project folder as you can see we have day one folder day two folder these slashes indicate that these are folders and then we have simply file names indicating that these are text files now if you want a more detailed way let's say i'll say ls and then space and i will write hyphen and then l now this hyphen is called a flag all right a simple flag nothing complex so if i hit enter on this as you can see we get a long detailed view of all the files inside our my project folder we have day one in fact it has given us that this is the user who created this folder and then it has given us the day and date and even timing of when these files were created now don't worry about uh, this zero feb it says this is just related to my computer only and we will get to correct it later on so don't worry about it just understand that we used the l flag along with the ls command that gives us a detailed view of all the files and folders in our current directory now moving on as you can see our uh, terminal or basically our command line interface has become really messy we have a lot of text here let's say we want to clear this out now you are not going to just close it and then again right click here and then open git bash here instead we have a command to clear our screen as well and that command is going to be simply called as clear so if i hit clear and enter and as you can see everything is cleared right now before moving on let's say you want to check what was the last command you entered you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard if i press the up arrow key you will see all the old commands that you have used and if you press down you will get back to the earlier commands so if i am pressing the upper key as you can see we have all the commands here now let's move on with another use case let's say i want to simply write something on the terminal there is a command to do that all right now the command is very simple i'll just write echo and then space and then anything i want in double quotes so let's say i will say hello guys and then close the double quotes and hit enter and it will say hello guys now this doesn't look really useful so in what case this command can be useful let's say we have this uh, file1.txt if i just open this file and it's here let me just bring it here we have this file1.txt i'm just going to put it here it is empty it has no text in it now i'm going to use the echo command to put some content or text into this file so i will write here echo and then the text we want let's say i will write this is a file one of my project and then i'll just close the double quotes 
And now in order to put this content inside my file one.txt, I'm just uh, simply going to write uh, this character and this is a greater than sign if you will just carefully look at it and then a space and then the name of the file. In our case, it is file one dot txt now this uh, basically appears visually as well so we are saying echo and then this is the content and we want that this content should be put inside this file one dot txt if i hit enter and you will see this is the file one dot txt and we have the exact text here isn't that amazing? Now, let's say similarly, we have the file 2.txt and I want to put some content in it. So, I will simply write echo and let's call it I am the file 2 of this project and then an exclamation mark and then we close the parentheses or the quotation marks I mean and then followed by a greater than sign and then the name of the file let's say I want to put it inside file 2.txt if I hit enter it will be there in order to check it I can just simply open the file 2 and as you can see we have the file 2 which says I am the file 2 of this project exactly what we have written here so this is the echo command and this is the use case of this echo command as well now let's say we just cannot open this again and again right i mean we are developers we are not supposed to open files with the help of gui we are supposed to use the command line tool right so instead of opening and seeing what's inside the files i'm just going to close them and let's say i want to see what is inside file one without actually opening it there is a command for that as well and that command is called the cat command so i will write here cat and then space and the name of the file let's say i am looking for what is inside a file one dot txt if i hit enter it says this is file one of my project this is exactly what is inside this file similarly i will write the same for file two i'll say cat and then space and then file two dot txt if I hit enter, as you can see, it says I am the file 2 of this project. The exact same text that we put in it earlier. So, this is the cat command using the command line tool. Now, next, let's say we have this file 1.txt, file 2.txt and my document.txt file, right? But uh, let's say I do not want this my document.txt file in my my project folder. So I can just simply right click and then click on delete. But we are not going to use GUI because we are programmers. So I'll use the command line interface instead. Now here we need to delete a file. In order to delete a file, we have a simple command which is called as rm which simply means to remove a file. So I will write rm then space and then name of the file. Let's say in our case it is my document. Now notice here I have to write the entire name of my document. Instead I can simply just write my and then I will press the tab on my keyboard. The tab button is on your keyboard. If you press on it, it is going to automatically detect that there is a file that has my in front of it and it will auto complete the name for us. So I'm going to remove rm means remove my my document.txt. If I hit on enter and as you can see my document.txt is gone from our folder all right now similarly i want to remove let's say file 2 in order to remove file 2 i will write rm and then space and then f i l e and then 2 now instead of writing dot txt i can simply press tab and it will auto complete the full file name and if i hit on enter as you can see file 2 is gone from our my project folder now another important command is the cd command and what is the use case of this cd command let's say you have this day one folder 
And in order to open this folder, you will just simply right click and then click on open. Then, then you are inside this empty folder. But how would we open a folder using the command line interface? This is what we use the cd command, which means change directory or change folder. So here, let's just clear the terminal. I'll just simply right clear and hit enter and the terminal is clear. Now let's uh, focus on this cd command. Let's say I want to go into this day one uh, folder, right? In order to do that, I'll write in my terminal, I'll say cd and then space and the name of the folder. Let's say day one. So this basically means change directory to day one. This will take us inside the day one folder. If I hit on enter, as you can see here, we have some changes. We have desktop and then I'm inside my project and now I am inside the day one. All right. So we are inside this day one folder. Now let's say I want to create a file inside the day one folder. Now I will just simply use the touch command. I'll write touch and then name of the file. Let's say day one underscore story dot txt. Now, if I hit enter, it will be created. You can just check it. If you just open the day one, as you can see, we have the day one underscore story dot txt file, which is a text document. All right. So this is how we can change uh, the directories or the folders. So let's say I am in my day one folder right now. Now I can use the ls command to view what is in it. If I hit enter, as you can see, we have one file that we just created, which is day1story.txt. Let's say I want to go back to my my project folder. All right. That means I want to go a step back. All right. In order to go a step back from where we are right now, which is that we are inside this day one. And from this day one, we want to move a step back to our my project folder. In order to do that, we can just simply write cd and then space and then two periods. This means that we want to go a step back. If we hit enter, as you can see, this changes. Now we are inside my project. We can also write ls and as you can see, we have all the files and folders of this my project directory. So, as you can see, there are a lot of commands in Bash and honestly, you don't need to memorize all of them. The key is practice. The more you see them, the more you use them, the more natural they will feel. Over time, these commands will make you super powerful when working with Bash or any other command line tool. Now, that's it for this video. Keep practicing, keep experimenting and soon you will be navigating and managing files using the command line interface like Pro. Now I will see you in the next lesson where we will start learning about Git and repositories. See you there.